Hey chickadees, it's Tuesday. I've been quite busy for the last couple of days, um, but I just didn't bring my camera to the studio with me. I have finished pretty much the waistcoat corset. All I've got to do is hand finish the binding, which I'm gonna do at home. I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to hem this bit and just fold it over once or fold it over like bias binding um i'll figure that out and then just laces in the back i'm probably just going to do white shoelace style lacing instead of like fancy satin ribbon or anything like that and then yesterday i spent the afternoon trying to make a cap for empire i watched the morgan donna video a while ago so i was doing it from memory so i thought i was doing it the right way i wasn't doing it the right way in the end i had to watch the morgan donna video again this is what i've ended up with this is the second version of this pattern i need to just alter these bits to that pattern then put it together again just to make sure it fit if i have time I'm going to be making an undershirt again using the Morgan Donna video. So this is the cap so far. I might take a tiny bit more out of the curve here, but I'm quite happy with how this is looking. Um, I didn't bring any clips or anything with me, so I can't put my hair up exactly the way I wanted it, but I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm just gonna take a smidge out of the curve and that should be the pattern done. Although, considering this took me three attempts, I'm really not feeling confident with the rest of the costume. I have cut out the two sides for the cap. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for the band in the middle. Morgan Donna did embroidery and knot work and I haven't got time for that. Um, because I've got a week and a half. So, it might honestly just be the ribbon that I used for the mock-up or I have some other ribbony bits in my drawer and it doesn't need to be perfect because it's my first game and I might not even like it I'm sure I will but you never know and then I've also cut out two circles for veils they need to be hemmed on the edge there this is a lovely cotton that James found me in a quilting shop when he went to get batting because some people have asked for padded coifs which I need to make. I have also re-watched the Morgan Donna video on the under things and I have planned out all my measurements and I've double checked it and I've checked it's going to fit when everything is done. So. I'm confident on this bit. I'm going to be using half inch allowances so if anything does go wrong I do have a tiny bit of wiggle room to adjust things and I've, over I've overestimated my measurements um, so it's more like that I have to take things in if I need to. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm now going to go home and finish editing the vlog for the Shambhala finish editing the video for the Shambhala vlog because I still haven't done that because I got a new computer which has a Windows 10 which doesn't have Windows Movie Maker my battery is about to run out so I'm learning Lightworks which has been a bit of a learning curve so the vlog's going to be a little late so I'm going to sit on the sofa with a Palmer Violet cider and do that and let me know in the comments if you're weird like me and you like Palmer Violet things Tastes like soap. James thinks it tastes like soap. Because it does taste like soap. It's soap in a glass. <laughs> so wrong. There we go. Soap in a glass. That's where I'm going to leave you today and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey chickadees, it's Wednesday. Today we are going to be making our shift. I am just going to triple check my measurements and that I've written everything out correctly on here. And then I'm going to make it out of this linen cotton blend um, in this kind of natural colour and make that up. I've cut out all my pieces and I pinned as I went so I didn't get confused. So this is 
the bodice piece with some gauze and I've just pinned them on um, so there's two lots of those and then I have some sleeves which also have some gauze just at the armpit it's just to make them a teeny bit wider so I'm going to stitch all the gauze on and then I'm going to stitch everything together and try it on so I will come back once I've done that I have finished putting together the under shift thing and this is the second time I sewed the arms on because it just didn't fit across the bust the first time I did it and even though I added extra inches and rechecked my measurements and all of that it still didn't fit and then the sleeves are all right they are far too long I'm gonna have to cut a good few inches off the ends of those and because I've had to shift everything up um, because it was too tight at the top here so I just cut a big strip off the top and moved everything up it's it comes to my knees um, which may be a tiny bit short for you know historical accuracy but I'll be wearing socks so if the wool is itchy then it's not gonna be too much of a hassle but I I like it it fits and I don't know what I'm going to do with the kind of selvages I might just zigzag stitch them I don't think I'll have enough time to hand stitch everything as much as I would love to obviously every all of this is put together with machine but you know it's nice to put a few like hand finishes and stuff on it but I don't think I'll have time so I will probably just zigzag stitch everything that's where I'm gonna leave it today because it's already like half five it's starting to get a bit dark and I don't have my front light with me for my bike wish I could have got more done bit worried at this point um, because the next is the kirtle and I don't want to be adding random bits and yeah but wish me luck and hopefully everything will be all right hey chickadees it's thursday i am in the studio i'm just having a cup of tea and i thought i'd just chat about what i've kind of got planned for today so i'm gonna do the coifs first because i'm confident with the coifs and i'm hoping that will kind of boost my confidence when it comes to the kirtle so if the coifs go all right then i'll be confident i have watched a couple of videos on kirtles i'll probably watch a few more the one i really like is by a swedish girl i'm not quite sure of her name but i will pop it in the description down below probably gonna have side lacing and i've been wondering whether to do darts in the bust because that's my biggest issue when fitting things to myself is what to do with my boobs and there are kind of two options um, when it comes to kirtles and medieval and simple medieval clothing you either just make a big rectangle and then cinch it in at the waist with the belt or you can do um, kind of a fitted silhouette but with some kind of closure so this one's going to be lacing at the sides you can also do lacing at the front but that still uh, creates an issue for kind of the fit over the boobs I do want it to be fitted so I'm gonna watch a few more videos and kind of gather up my options and then pick one um, obviously I'm gonna make a mock-up of the bodice bit and if it turns out that it actually looks all right without darts then I'll go ahead and do that but if I feel like I need darts I'll put them in so today and I should have just watched Morgan Donna's video um, she completely explained how to do like the bus curve especially if you have a bigger bus and where to put that um, excess because they didn't have darts and I'm gonna change it to front lacing rather than side lacing. I was originally worried that <clears throat> you'd see like my undershift through the lacing, like a lot of kind of more fashiony medieval clothing has a gap, a bit like the stays that I have. There's a gap 
and I didn't want that but um, the video she did and then I watched another video they had front lacing and they had it completely closed and I one of the videos I watched the girl put two layers of fabric in the bust portions or she put like a facing that went completely over the bust to give it more support which I didn't think of which is a fabulous idea however the wool I'm using I probably couldn't get away with two layers of it but I have you know some canvassy more sturdy stuff probably the stuff I made these boxes out of that I could just use as a facing and it would work pretty well so that's what I'm gonna do but first I have traced the pattern of this coif because James doesn't make patterns or he makes the original pattern was made out of cardboard and that's probably at home and I have to work from a paper pattern I have to have paper patterns that I then put on my pattern shelves there else you know it doesn't work this is the pattern I am going to cut it out I have added a bit extra onto the middle section like a centimeter because the gentleman that I am making these coifs for have a slightly bigger head than James and his friend Matt so I want to double check and make sure it fits and especially with the padded one sometimes with all that padding and quilting it can get a tiny bit smaller. I have everything cut out and I thought sort of to remind myself what was going on you know I'd film it. This is the undershift. This is a square of uh, the cotton and linen blend to make an apron. I have some scraps here for bandages as I'm going to be playing a medic and then I have the coif pieces all cut out here so I've got the straps for both of them, I have the middle sections for both of them I have the side sections for both of them and then I have the batting and this is bamboo batting from a local quilt shop so that is everything I have so far that's just scraps that's scraps that's now scraps now that I have a pattern I can put those in the bin so I'm gonna get everything sewn up or at least all the coif bits sewn up I have put together one layer of the linen and the batting and it always reminds me of the um, fighter caps from Star Wars because yeah because it, it's white and it's got the curtain lines on it so I'm gonna have some lunch and then I'm gonna carry on with this I am really happy with how it's coming together so yeah today's going okay so far I have finished the coifs it took me longer than I thought it would but they're done um, so they're all ready for their new home and uh, now I'm going to draw out the pattern for the kirtle just the top bit for now so I can just test the fit of that I finished the pattern for the kirtle bodice I put it up against my dress form and it seems like it's gonna vaguely fit um you know all the bits are in the right places but it was a bit of a mare trying to decipher the video instructions so i am um, i was gonna do the sleeve pattern today as well but i'm just a bit tired and yeah so i'm gonna go home and then start making mock-ups tomorrow and trying to test the fit and hopefully by the end of the weekend i will have a kirtle that fits so wish me luck hey chickadees it's saturday this is the first mock-up of the kirtle bodice and it actually looks a bit too big i've tried it on my dress form first to see if there's any like glaring fit issues it seems a tiny bit too long that way and the armholes are being a bit weird so this is the first mock-up on and yes I didn't need to add quite as much extra in the bust but it's better to have to take things away than add things um 
I'm wearing it with my shift as well, just to make sure, you know, it fits around the arms and things like that. And yeah, it, it does. Like the arms are in, or the shoulders are in a really nice place. So they'll be like a half inch here and then the sleeves. So I don't actually have to make that many alterations to it. The back angle for the gauze and the skirt and stuff is fine here. I, I, it definitely fits. I might take this angle in just a little bit. Because um, even though it's probably just the zip that's making it point forward, I just... Yeah, I might just take a smidge out of it just to have a flatter front because that's kind of just the silhouette I like. And then the back, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Um, I might take just a smidge out of the back. But I am really actually pleased and so relieved that... You know, the first mock-up has gone really well. The shoulders look really good. The back looks really good and really smooth. Um, so, yeah, I've just got to get rid of <laughs> this bit here. But that's all right. That's just a case of kind of pinching it in here and grading it into just this point here. And, and yeah, I really like the way that this fits and I am so relieved. So this is the mock-up of the bodice with the sleeves. There are a few alterations I need to make. So I need to lengthen the sleeves by about an inch and a half. I have sewn each sleeve on differently. So one is with the seam at the front and one is with the seam at the back because I wasn't 100% sure where the fullness of the sleeve head was going to fall and I think I prefer how it fits with the sleeve at the back. Um, I probably need to take a tiny smidge out of the underarms because they are a bit tight with the shift on underneath but that's not too much of a um, hard problem to fix and it falls at a nice place on the shoulder and then I'm probably going to take another little bit out of the front here just because it's still a bit kind of bulky and yeah just there, there looks like there's too much fabric in the front here so I'll probably take another bit out but I'm really happy with how this has come together and yeah apart from the armholes being a tiny bit small it's worked out pretty well hey chickadees it's sunday this i think is the sixth mock-up i've made but i am happy with this one we were here until about 10 o'clock last night trying to get things sorted and i was having such problems with the sleeves and it being too tight across the back and i couldn't figure out why and it wasn't until I actually like looked at the back that I realised that my arm side was far too deep pointing towards the back seam. Um, so all the nice fabric I had in my sleeve head was just being pulled into that gap. So it was just too tight. So if I had actually looked at the back seam like two mock-ups earlier, or the arm size, back of the arm size, two mock-ups earlier I probably wouldn't have been so stressed about it but I got to a good point I did all the kind of um make finalizing the patterns last night and my gut was just telling me just make one more mock-up just to be double sure because I don't want to cut out the wool and it not be what I want it to be I'm really pleased with how this has turned out I also know now what I need to do on the neck um, of the shift so I can probably just get a pencil and make some marks so I know where to hand the neck of this. This is the wool I am going to use. It is the kind of scraggy scratchy stuff that's perfect for reenactments um and it's a really good price i think it was like nine pound fifty a meter or something like that i'll link the website down below but this 
is the coffee, just wool, and then we have a red one. Hang on. This is the red one. It's coming up very scarlet on the camera, but it is more of a blue-based red, and it's got this lovely kind of flecking through it. There is this kind of Saxon style wool that James got for a cloak and it's got all these kind of weave patterns in it um, just to you know add a bit of interest to the cloak but yeah that's the stuff I'm gonna use this stuff here so I'm probably gonna spend the rest of today doing some hand sewing trying to get things hand finished so like the veils <laughs> Um, the veils, the cap, and then the ends of the coif strap. James has asked if he can have a little section in the lug. So, this is what he has been doing. So, James has been to Empire all of this year. So, there's four sections a year. So, James's character is a, a potter. And he has been making pipes. Smokable pipes. Like, actually useful pipes not props for the entire I mean, a event. Lot of, a lot of people use them as props because a lot of people don't smoke anymore but uh, these are they are definitively usable um this is uh, white earthenware that is the, pretty much the closest you can get to actual pipe clay hello <laughs> uh, that's the uh, closest you can get to actual pipe clay that's just slip um slips just a mix uh, of uh, water clay and a uh, chemical that add, makes it suspend nicely and doesn't just separate. That is a cup which one of my friends made which I'm now using to pour slip. Uh, these are two plaster moulds. The plaster sucks the moisture out of the clay and so you end up with a thin wall. If you have a look at those ones, there you go. You have a thin wall of clay. So these are going to be in there for 15 minutes. Uh, the longer you leave them in the mould, the thicker the wall goes. So if you would just leave it for ages, you just end up with a solid pipe, which is fairly pointless. Now the reason, the way these are smokable, you can see there's a little hole at the end. Um, you can see the little brass rods down here. Woo, brass rods, yay! Ta -da. Uh, those go into, there's an extra channel. You'll see that when we open the mould up later. There's an extra channel that that pokes into. So it's kept straight for about that distance before it actually starts becoming part of the whole pipe mould. These have been in for 15 minutes and then you pour out the pour out the clay you can see what it poured um, and then that gets so that goes back into the bucket of slip so that you're reusing clay um, i need to get some more because i'm now down to like there then 45 minutes later uh, the hopefully the clay has gone nice and hard so what we're going to do is now take a pipe out of the mold so that is the big mold we're going to do the let's do the big mold because the big mold is actually the big pipes are slightly nicer so um, i tend to take these out that way up, you learn. I look at had the terrible mold making. Those are supposed to be the same width. So you take off your these are bits of bicycle inner tube. And you actually take those off. So don't throw away your inner tubes. You want to do mold making? Grab, grab yourself some of those. You learn with a mold. Every mold is slightly different. You learn which side you have to yank off in order to get the thing out. If you do the wrong side, you pull, and then the pipe sticks to the top and falls off. So here's hoping I'm about to do this the right way around. Um, Let's grab that. Boop. No, I did the wrong way. Oh. So, <laughs> what do I know? There it goes. There is a pipe. Ooh, isn't it pretty? So, next job is to get the pipe actually out. I tend to put my finger inside the pipe, lift up the brass rod, and then very gently, there we go. It should just pop out. Like so. And now we have a pipe. Uh, then you get your, you know, sculpty tool, otherwise known as a pair of scissors. And I'm just trimming off the little bit here on the base so that it sits a bit more flush on the table when I put it down the second, doesn't rock all over the place because if it rocks that's going to destroy the edges on the on the nice base bit we've got there. And now we very gently try and take off, we've got to do this vertically, I was about to show you that this way and be like that's stupid because then the thing will fall over. So we've got to do this vertically. That goes there. Take your pipe and you very gently place that on your flat surface and then you come down here and you look at it and you go oh what a wonky mess is that and you straighten up because once this is dry you're not going to be able to re 
rejig that. So you can see this channel we were talking about earlier. Where? Where's the pointy end? There's the pointy end. There you go, pointy end. Pointy end first, that goes in. You can see that goes all the way to the end. And because it's got this channel at the start, it can't wiggle all over the place and end up poking a hole through your pipe. Obviously, you don't poke that so far that you end up poking a hole at the other end. He's also been working on altering his chainmail shirt. Uh, technically, it's called a halberk. This a one. halberk? Uh, because it goes, this is a Viking style piece of chainmail. The main issue I have with the Viking style halberks is that they are hu like they're huge. Like if I put my arm there, um, it dangles down to like here which is horrific. So that's just an awful lot of extra weight on your arms. It's a lot of extra weight on your shoulders. And so I am just taking out some chunks like so. Ta -da! So some nice big triangles are coming out. Um, and then I just need to ring these back together. These are what are called knot contractions. So we're going down, you can see there, there would normally be a ring. There we go. So this ring is gonna go in there and link. Ooh. Uh, those four together, so those two, and then there's another two there that it would link uh, up through. There we go, and then we do that up with a pair of pliers, and we end up with a nice uh, ring. At this point, when we get down to here, we've lost another one, so that's gonna be a little knot contraction. Sometimes the, you can leave a little hole each time you do this, but I'm gonna, I like linking it in such a way that you don't end up with a tiny hole at every contraction. Blue paper, incredibly important, because otherwise you can't see what the hell you're doing between the two layers of chain out, it just becomes a noisy mess of horrificness. So. Hey chickadees, it's Monday and it is curtle cutting out day. So I have the front bit pinned here. I can't quite get both sections on like next to each other. So but that's fine. I've got like four or five meters of this wall. So I, it's, there's going to be plenty. But yes, I'm just cutting it out and triple checking all my measurements because I don't want to get this wrong. Hey chickadees, it's Tuesday and the kettle is all put together. I have put kind of like a facing in some canvas um, that I had in and yeah, it fits really nicely. Probably a bit too big, but I'd rather it too big than too tight and yeah so I will put it on with the shift and I'll show you guys what it actually looks like on. I have pinned it to my shift for the moment so it's not done up properly but this is what it looks like um, as I said it's not quite as fitted as I want it to be but honestly it'll do. It's also far far too long um, I most definitely overestimated how much extra I would need. I need to, I still need to sort the shift out. I obviously need to iron all the seams and, you know, stitch things down. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do everything that I need my machine for. I don't need to use my machine to hem the things. I can just, like, fold things up and then stitch it down and I could just, like, pad stitch it spend tomorrow evening and Thursday doing that and then I've got to sort out the neck on the shift and get that all neatened and hemmed I need to hem the bottom of the shift uh, the sleeves I like that the sleeves poke out a tiny bit that's I really like that detail and then the cap, I need to finish the cap because I need to put my hair up with everything and try it on the length. But I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. And yeah, as I said, it's not quite as fitted as I want it to be, but I'm going to have a belt and an apron, so it'll, it'll be fine. I just need to do all the finishing touches and then put the holes, do handbound eyelets down it, and it should be good. I have machine hemmed the bottom and the sleeves hang on there we go the sleeves and I have I or tried to iron the seams as much as I can and they're, they're vaguely flat but um, yeah some like the front 
facing I'm gonna have to dot quilt then I also have to do the hand bound eyelets but I will do that tomorrow so I'm gonna take all this home the thread and my awl and yeah I still haven't got anything to tie it up with I might just have to use white shoelace that might just have to do um unless I can nip to fabric land tomorrow and see if they have anything but I'm gonna go home now because it's quite late and I've done a lot of late nights lately how many times can I say late um so yeah I'm gonna go home and relax hey chickadees it's Thursday I didn't film anything yesterday because I came home and pretty much just slept and then in the evening I was doing some hand sewing on the kettle so I got all of this like dot quilting done around the neckline and then down the front and then I got one side of the eyelets sewn and today I'm just doing the other side of the eyelet so they're quite quick to do I started with using my awl to poke the hole and then I tried to widen the hole with a chopstick and it was just really tough on my hands so I decided to stop doing that so now I poke the hole or start the hole with the awl and then just use a screwdriver to widen the hole and keep the hole open and then just stitch around it and then just keep putting the screwdriver back in to keep the hole wide enough and I've got about five more to do I think on this side and then I can sort the lacing out for the front and then literally the only thing left to do is the cap and I have to wait for my hair to dry so I can put it up in the style I want and just test the cap and make sure that the um, strap is long enough and the correct length that I want it to be and then the whole costume will be finished. I can't believe I managed to make a whole costume in a week and a half. Um, I'm not going to attempt it again. Well, not purposefully at least because it was just too much um yeah just the sheer exhaustion i felt yesterday was just too much i'm really pleased with how it's come out and gonna finish it up i have threaded the eyelets with some leftover olive bias binding and i think it goes quite well with this brown it's quite warm <laughs> or at least it was to put on so i'm a bit whew, warm now I like it it's not quite as fitted as I wanted it to be but I think that's probably for the best so all I have to do now is figure out what I'm doing with my hair I have a vague idea and then get the cap finished and then everything is finished so I have finished my cap um I hope you can see it all right I tried doing this in the mirror but it didn't really work um so I put my hair into two side plaits and just kind of bunched it up at the back and pinned it up and then put the cap on and measured um, where I or how long I wanted the strap to be and then just hand stitched it down or hand stitched it together and I think it looks quite cute I've tried it on with the veils and everything like that and that is the costume finished in the nick of time um yeah as I said earlier probably wouldn't you know try and make a costume again in a week and a half but it's been a big learning curve and i'm quite excited to go to larp hey chickadees it's friday and we are on our way to empire sorry if it's a bit noisy we are on the m32 just about to get onto the m4 the m4 one of them M's. we've done this trip so many times i haven't <laughs> it's the same route that we used to go to my parents' house, basically. Okay, so yeah, it's the M4. Jim's is driving. We have everything in the back of the van. Um, not just our stuff, but some of our friends' stuff as well. There are weapons and shields and 
all the um, goodness knows what else in the back of the van. Um, so yeah, so we're just on our way. We have our coffees because we always have a coffee when we're, you know, going somewhere. And then we have oh, it right. is very sunny. I kind of wish I brought my sunglasses. Um, wine gums and what else did you get? Hair drops. Hair drops. Best sweet in the world because they taste like super glue. <laughs> I am not allowed to film in the actual kind of blart area because obviously it will take you out of the experience. There are dedicated um, like camera people there and photographers, so it's fine. But I can obviously still film at camp and things like that. Hey chickadees, it's Friday. The following Friday to the last time you saw me. I have done a bit of sewing, I finished this skirt, but I haven't done any vlogging, I haven't done anything strenuous or anything like that. So I thought, instead of leaving the Empire vlog just kind of when I got there, I was just like, I'm here! I thought it would be a nice idea to film a rundown of both my experience at my first ever LARP and also how the costume turned out. So in terms of the actual LARP, it it was good. I knew that as a kind of uh, green player that I probably wouldn't fully immerse myself into the game at first. Um, you always kind of stay a step back just to make sure you know what's going on and things like that. I have tabletop role played before but I have never live action role played. And this leads to kind of feeling like you haven't quite done enough or made your mark in the game or things like that. They were things that I kind of felt, but I know that if I continued playing the game, which I'm tempted to do, then those things are going to change and we've got ideas for things to do and I'm a healer, so there is a field hospital. People come off the battlefield, there's a tent, which is the hospital tent. So I spent most of my weekend in there, which was really fun actually. I had some really nice people kind of take me under their wing and teach me, you know, what to do and things like that. In terms of both how to heal and, you know, how to role play, kind of live action style. So that was really good. I'm definitely tempted to carry on playing. I've got more ideas for costumes already and kind of like in terms of the costume I have never worked with wool before which I don't know if I mentioned I probably mentioned earlier in the vlog and the experience I had was actually really really good it was a really nice type of wool in that it didn't shrink when I washed it which was good it wasn't too scratchy and it wasn't as warm as I thought it was going to be. It was actually quite warm forecast wise. It got up to about 21 degrees on the Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember which one it was. Like in high noon hours. So 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. It started getting a bit uncomfortable but only really if I was marching around and walking quite quickly. We did a procession around the other nations camps for Wasail, which is the kind of harvest festival that my nation the marchers did because we're based on old English kind of folklore things so the harvest is very important to us. And that got a bit warm walking around the whole field but after four o'clock or half four when the temperature like seriously dropped seriously fast, I was glad to have that wall. 
it was only like super late at night so 11 12 o'clock when i had to put another layer of wool on um i had just a big piece of wool fabric that i used as a cape basically and i stayed warm the whole event using that method so will i be going again probably at least once next year and will i be making more costumes definitely i would like to make a another kirtle but i'd like to make it sleeveless and i'd like to make it kind of half and half so half brown and half red because that's the color of the family that i belong to we are called the Haston Volunteers and we're from a town called Haston in a land called the Morn World. So I'd like to make that and a new shift to go underneath it if I if it's going to be sleeveless. And then I'm also tempted to make a, a coat and a surcoat combination as well. And then most people, or a lot of people, make stuff, mainly alcohol. And we bought so much alcohol, it's, it's unreal. And I've planned to do a alcohol review of Anvil, which is actually going to be quite fun. We as a family are going to be trying to make some nice high-end meads. And I've had the idea to try and make <clears throat> a Palma Violet mead don't know if it's going to work but I want to try because Palmer Violet flavour things is very in right now as you probably guess from me drinking the Palmer Violet cider I'm going to get some syrup probably and just add it in with the honey when we you know make up the mixture to ferment and then I probably might make a little bit on the side so if James makes normal mead I'm going to take a little bit of that and then do the crushed palm by the sweet method which is what you do with vodka and gin and there's a lot of flavoured vodkas and flavoured gins in Anvil because pe that's what people do they crush up sweets and you know make fun fruity flavours with this vodka because you it's so easy to make and then you sell it for in character money uh, and you can get quite rich off it and then there are some people or a lot of people who will go around at the beginning of the event and just buy up all the alcohol they can and then sell it on for a profit. And it's not against the rules. It's, you know, it's what happens in real life. So it happens in the game and it's really, really, it's really fun. So we're going to do that. The next event is next April. We're now in a period called the Long Dark because most companies don't LARP over winter because it's just horrible if you're camping just to camp in winter it, it's, it's really not nice so yeah that's what we're going to be doing over the winter trying to make mead I need to cut all of these threads off Ugh. threads, so many threads I'm going to have two buttons like this I don't know how well you can see that. It's got, they're kind of dark, really dark blue, but with like a lighter blue centre. I thought that would look really nice. So I'm just gonna stitch the waistband down and then I'll probably do handband buttonholes. There's only two. So it's not gonna take that long. And then I find that when doing hand bound things the back always looks better than the front so I'm gonna sew them from the back and hopefully that means it'll be nice and flat on the front and it'll look good so I hope you enjoyed this vlog it's the upload schedule is gonna be a bit weird because I have missed a week this is gonna be up a bit late and then I'm probably also going to be putting up my studio tour, which I have filmed um, as a kind of bonus slash sorry I was late with the last video video. So I hope you are well 
and you stay tuned for that and join me in my mead making adventures. <laughs>